I always felt like my life was a blessing and a curse. Throughout my entire life, I felt alone. My childhood definitely had an impact on me. My mom gave birth to me at the age of 43, and only until lots of prayer, she was able to conceive. Because of this, she named me after Samuel, based on the Bible. It wasn't necessarily pretty, but I'm still thankful for my mom and all that really she could do. As an only child and without a father figure, I grew bitter and jealous for a dream family. At times, I even felt like I didn't have a mom. So fly like angels, most high. She was too stressed, so high, too praise, busy, so fly like too absent to care for her child. She was only, only focused on surviving. And as a result, so I spent parts of my childhood living with my best friend, a cousin, some other cousins, and my aunt. To be honest, I don't really know my mom. And at times, when we did live together, we would always fight. There was always a tension between us. Sometimes I feel like... Sometimes I feel like I raised myself. I'm thankful because the circumstances I've gone through have made me the person that I am today. It's given me the drive to rise above my conditions. My condition of parental neglect has allowed me to rely on only one person, only one thought that is unfailing. That's Jesus Christ. I tried to find my answer through drugs, started smoking weed in high school, eventually did acid, did shrooms, and I'm not gonna lie, it does give you a sense of spirituality, it does give you answers, but those answers come from within, and eventually you'll just form your own god, a false god that is contorted and it's convenient at your terms but eventually you realize the truth because the truth you can't hide from it we were made in god's image and his likeness and nothing can fill that void except the personal relationship with him So basically, I started smoking weed probably junior year of high school. After a whole year, I started experimenting with acid and germs. And I'm not going to lie, yes, it did give me a sense of spirituality. It did give me answers. But at the end of the day, it didn't really give me the fulfillment that God desired um, or made us for because we were made in His image and we were meant to know Him. And no matter how many drugs, you do or whatnot um or how enlightened you get at the end of the day the only thing that can satisfy our souls is jesus christ and i know this because of a personal encounter that i've had with jesus so on easter i took a really really big dose of acid my biggest dose of acid ever if you guys have ever taken acid it was like 400 ug 500 ug i had like an ego death and everything um, and if you guys don't understand 
like what acid is like you basically just see like a whole bunch of visuals like color enhancements swirly swirls and like you are literally into another spiritual realm taking acid and mushrooms and that kind of experience i i was clarified that there is a spiritual realm and there is something beyond just what we perceive in the um sober state that clarified to me that there must be a god but i didn't believe that there was jesus right so on my seventh time there's okay i need to clarify that there is a such thing as a good trip and a bad trip i've never had a bad trip until my seventh trip which was my last and my only bad trip and in the bible seven is a very significant number obviously because the seventh day is the day of rest and um pretty common in the bible so i took that as a sign from god and it was also on easter so basically I'm going to go into depth of how my bad trip was and how God delivered me from the bad trip. I was literally shaking like this, like, and my heart was a million miles per hour. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. My body felt like it was shrinking and I, I literally thought I was going to die. The reason being is I know what it's like to be tripping on acid. I know what to expect, but my perception of reality was sober. Like whatever you're perceiving right now is how I was perceiving the world, except I just felt like I was dying. So I thought I had some messed up tabs, messed up drugs, and I literally thought I was just gonna die. In that panic, I started pacing from my bathroom to my room, eventually like just going back and forth. I was contemplating about calling 911. In that panic, I just ended up in the bathroom. I looked myself in the mirror and I said, wow, Sam, at 19 years old, you're really gonna die trying to find God or whatever in the most stupid way. And your talents are just going to go to a whole, like your talents are just going to be wasted for nothing. And you're, you're actually going to die at 19 years old. And just accepting my own death, I called out, are you real God? And um, the lights started flickering and then they got brighter. And even though I am tripping on acid, I still took that as a sign because right after that happened, the bad trip ended and the thing is my experience of the bad trip was like not the typical type of bad trip and it was like in a sober state so i knew it was from god and in the bible it says that god is light and his eyes and his eyes are like fire um right after that i just went to my bed and i started watching hans asian's um easter sermon and pastor joe went through a bible verse revelations 22 20 and it says um I'm basically paraphrasing, but it says that um, Jesus Christ is coming soon. The reason why that really hit me was because I've been seeing the number 222 since 2019. Like coincidentally, like looking through Instagram, 222 likes. I turn on my phone, it's like 222. It's 12, 22, 222 everywhere since like 2019. And um Revelations 2220 20 has the number 222 in it. So, um, yeah, I just came to understand that Jesus is real. And my understanding that Jesus is real has been revolutionary because there's a big difference between understanding that there is a God and that there is Jesus. And I learned that finding your spirituality within drugs. Yes, they give you answers, but at the end of the day, you're just forming your own God that is convenient at your own terms, and you're not respecting God for who he really is and what he did for you on that cross. And um, I've been sober ever since. And it's like not, I've I've done this before in the past where I've gone like a month or two sober or whatnot, but I've always had like a back of the mind desire to like smoke weed or something like that. Um, but oddly, this time around, it's like I have no desire to ever go back to that. And slowly, as I've been reading my own Bible, it's just been so much more easier because I've been filling my cup up with real spiritual food instead of things of the world that it just leaves you empty. And I'm so thankful that um, Jesus was able to um, do that for me. And um, yeah, that was my testimony. And um, 
Um, I've decided to get baptized um, today. first love and in this process I've come to realize there was a lot of sacrifice for me to be where I am right now and I don't blame my past anymore I accept it fully I don't blame my mom I don't blame my dad blame God. In fact, I see it as a testimony for others that whatever you're going through, whatever you have gone through, is only to relate to others. To share the pain is to be human. And to share the love is to know God. <laughs>